Well, welcome everyone. My name is Sheila Simon. I am the Lieutenant Governor and more importantly, the Chair of the Classrooms First Commission. Uh, and I want to thank Dr. Radke for allowing us to use his space here. Uh, it's nice to be back. We had a, a neat meeting with your faculty when I was here last time and, uh, uh, and before that meeting, a great meeting with your consortium that you work with and lots to boast about here. Um, let's see. Uh, and I, I'm appreciative of, of all of you gentlemen who are here today, even though you are small in number, I'm appreciative <laughs> of your, your willingness to be here uh, and to participate in this process. We are recording these uh, so that other commission members can get the benefit of your ideas and so other folks can have access to this information. Uh, so uh, although we could probably just adjourn and sit around the table here and talk, I'd like to make sure that everyone can get the benefit of, of your questions and ideas. Uh, let me just give a, a quick rundown of what we're up to. Uh, the discussion started with a discussion about uh, school consolidation and a governor's budget message. Uh, through the legislative process, it was decided to have a commission to study the issues. Uh, I volunteered to chair uh, the commission in order to focus on two goals of uh, efficiency in terms of using public funds and opportunity for students, even at the smallest of schools. Uh, and that's really what we focused on and come up with some, uh, I think, wonderful recommendations that uh, might not grab headlines, but, but may uh, have a positive impact in the state. And that's certainly my goal. Um, and, and because we have such a small amount of folks here and have some information already available in other formats on what the recommendations are, I think we might have just a short summary of that by you, Lynn, here. But first, I'd like to have uh, the rest of the commission members introduce themselves so you guys know who's been working so hard on this. Good afternoon. I'm Linda Riley Mitchell from the State Board of Education. I'm Patrick Rocks, General Counsel for the Chicago Public Schools. Ava Harston, representing the Chicago Teachers Union. And, and they have been working hard along with other members of the commission. It's been a great bunch to work with. Uh, and to my right is uh, Lynn Hayfully, uh, who has been helping us a great deal in developing a, an outstanding process to maximize the input from across the state, uh, to learn as much as we can from other folks who've done research both within and outside of the state. Uh, and if I could ask you, Lynn, to do a, a, a condensed version of uh, what our recommendations are. I think that would be appropriate. Okay. 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 And for those of you who didn't see these, um, there are copies of these recommendations out on the table right outside the door, so you can help yourself to those. Um, okay, our recommendations focus on three approaches to achieving greater efficiency for our education dollars and opportunities for students to learn. So those are in the areas of realignment or another word for consolidation, uh, sharing across districts, and also things that districts uh, can benefit districts internally, uh, no matter what kind of district you are in terms of better opportunities and more efficiencies. And you might say these are a group of recommendations around voluntary consolidation, virtual consolidation, which is the sharing, and districts benefiting from um, new, some of these new recommendations. So just looking at the realignment or consolidation recommendations, the first group is to look at reducing barriers to consolidation. So such things as allowing districts that are not next door to each other, but close by to still consolidate, to allow very small districts to dissolve, um, to make it easier for dual districts, meaning elementary and high school districts, to merge uh, and not uh, be too much of a shock financially, um, to ha possibly have some construction funding uh, specifically for districts that consolidate, and also to allow districts to, to delay the effective date of their consolidation while they wait for construction funds. Another part of our charge was to identify where specifically um, consolidation would be most helpful. Um, 
one of our recommendations is to look at those districts that reside in counties that have a very small student population and a projected decline in that enrollment over the next 20 years and to ask them to do some feasibility and efficiency studies to see if that kind of uh, grouping uh, would benefit them and their students. Um, another concept is to develop a statewide district efficiency profile where district data can be used by each other uh, and also by policymakers to sort of pinpoint areas where consolidation or shared services might be beneficial. And finally, we all know that there is an incentive system for consolidation that's currently in law, so there are certain payments that the state makes to help districts get over the hump of consolidation. Uh, one, these are two uh, mutually exclusive recommendations. One would be to review that entire system and possibly revise the entire thing and use some different indicators. Um, another recommendation, if that didn't happen, would be to modify the current incentives and basically beef them up uh, to make it more uh, enticing, shall we say. Um, for, so for example, some new incentives like a special incentive for dual districts to consolidate or a special incentive to consolidate with a high poverty or low performing school district. They often have trouble finding partners for consolidation. A big area of our recommendations deal, deals with shared services. Um, many businesses and industries are benefiting from sharing. Many municipalities, same thing. Uh, school districts are starting to do this, but we see a patchwork and we'd like to see a broader participation. Um, first of all, in educational shared services. So all kinds of um, collaborations across educational entities like community colleges where we're sitting today and K-12 school districts and four-year institutions, looking at regional service delivery and trying to make that um, uh, provide better and, and more varied opportunities for students, et cetera. Um, there's one fairly uh, large concept, uh, that first recommendation on this list is basically saying, how about over time we look at getting away from seat time and Carnegie units and attendance and start looking at student performance and helping students accelerate their way through school if at all possible. So there's another idea. Um, on the operations side, a lot of our good financial minds got together. Uh, these are the folks who run large school districts as business officials as well as others who participate in the, in the financial side of districts. And they have a group of recommendations that basically forms a package of assistance to districts that would like to share some of their back office operations. And so uh, some of these could be big money savers. We've got a lot more detail in those materials and online. Um, but just in general, uh, trying to create an environment where shared services can flourish across districts and more money that used to be behind the scenes could then go to the classroom. And then finally, things that could benefit all districts. Uh, first idea, this is another big idea, uh, is to have the state adopt a two-year budget cycle so that there could be some planning and you would know what kind of state funding would be available within the coming year. Um, also, the idea, a perennial idea that comes up a lot is when the money doesn't come, how about some flexibility from some of the school mandates that schools are subject to, um, ramping up the availability of professional development online just in time. It's starting to happen in a few places, but there are many, many trainings that educators and school district workers have to take, uh, and um, it's, it could be much more efficient. And then some general ideas like sharing uh, the best tools you have in your district, uh, for efficiency and effectiveness, doing some really serious strategic planning with your communities, and then finally having um, some statewide purchases of licenses that schools take advantage of, such as library databases, which different districts uh, have to do on their own now. So that's the general overview, and I'm gonna kick it back to you. All right, Lynn, thank you very much. Uh, at this point, we'd like to hear from anyone who uh, has ideas for us to consider or complaints or questions uh, and let me mention too that uh, this is not the only opportunity to have input if uh, if this is new to you and you 
take the documents home and have some good ideas later. We would love to hear from you later. You can send in information to uh, Lieutenant Governor's website uh, and we'd be happy to collect that and share it with the rest of the commission as we engage in the process of trying to uh, finalize, polish up, add some detail to our uh, draft recommendations. Uh, so we have one person who has uh, requested to testify, and we won't rule out anyone else, but we'll start off with L. Paul Eisenstadt, who is here, and we'd like to hear from you, Paul. And we do have, uh, to be formal about it, we've got little uh, flags here if we need to flag anyone down to stop, but I think, uh, I think Paul will be pretty responsible here. <laughs> In light of the uh, low number of people speaking, I request to maybe extend my remarks, if that would be possible, as long as they're on target or on content. You go, Paul, and, and if we need to cut yeah. you off, we will, all right? Okay. How does that right. sound? First, <laughs> terrific. First, I want to say how much I appreciate uh, this opportunity to speak with uh, and directly address uh, Your Honor, Lieutenant Governor <laughs> Simon, and to have your undivided attention. This is quite an honor, a day I probably always remember. Um, I also wanted to thank uh, Dr. Hafley for all of her help and, uh, and um, how much I appreciate and, uh, everything she's done to help me prepare for this uh, moment. Uh, and then I also wanted to um, call out my Senator, uh, State Senator Susan Garrett and let you know that she's most responsible for my involvement with community and government. Uh, she has been a wonderful mentor and Senator and um, representative of the people, um, and I just wanted to say in all my life I haven't met somebody from one party that's been so admired by people from the other party, uh, and I'm going to sorely miss her in our government, and uh, uh, I just think she's a terrific senator, and I think the whole state's going to miss her in the Senate. Uh, and I also wanted to thank Elaine Neckwitz, my representative, who also has been very supportive. Okay, I'm going to start my content. All right, I read the, your... Um, uh, your commission report and I generally uh, support everything that's in there and going forward with the dual districts but um, I, I want to specifically show my area because that's what I know the most about and this applies to the rest of the state that has a similar area so this is where I am in Glenbrook area and I have we have and you all have one of these mm -hmm. so in my area we have a high school district that has two high schools and then feeding that high school we have one, two, three, four, five elementary districts. And, and just at the initial look, <laughs> this is a very inefficient way to, as I like to say, run a business. So going to a dual district, I think, is the long-term plan for the state. But I think there are some real big uh, roadblocks or milestones in that, in that the high school has a whole different pay scale for teachers as the elementary schools. And I think the best way for the state moving forward is uh, in the short term to go to try to merge what I'd like to say is make this illegal, um, but basically merge all the uh, elementary districts in a single uh, high school district into one unit, which is something that you did mention in this. So I want to say that I support that, but I think we need to go a two step kind of process. First, let's get all these merged into a single district. And then later, a few years later, we can talk about getting that merge into a single dual district. So I think if we take that two steps, we can see, uh, we can realize a lot more um, benefits uh, sooner. So some of the points that I want to make, first I want to go over the um, advantages of just merging the elementary districts. Um, I think that that's something that's more doable than actually combining it with a high school district. All right, so the first thing is, um, Administrative advantages, clearly, <clears throat> instead of having uh, five superintendents that we have here, one, two, three, four, five, we would only have one, and a staff. So we would be reducing staff, so that, that's clearly just eliminating staff. My personal estimation would be approximately a million dollars per district eliminated. Of course, if you go from four to one, from five to one, you're eliminating four. That's just my ballpark guess, but the, the concept is <clears throat> you're reducing all of this administration which uh, you would just have the one administration administrating this big box. These are 14 elementary schools and one, two, three, four, five, six junior high schools. That would be a single um, district and a single administration. Now, some of the other benefits of that is, uh, well, first thing, you'd have one purchasing department. Now, there was some um, 
there was some uh, reference made to sharing. And that's a great idea. But when you're sharing, you, you have two separate districts that are, are sharing or working together. You still have a purchasing department here, and you still have a purchasing department here, and those two departments have to work with each other. It's, <clears throat> it's clearly much more efficient to have a single purchasing department purchasing for the entire entity of, of these 14 elementary schools and six junior high schools. Um, again, the economies of scale dramatically increase, clearly. Uh, materials, equipment, consumables, food, um, things like that would all be at a much more uh, beneficial economies of scale. Uh, and again, by a single purchasing department, which can look at the whole entity now, the uh, entire, what I would say, the Glenbrook schools, and purchase for the much larger unit. Um, <clears throat> other advantages, logistics. Right now, each uh, school district you, you know, has their own storehouse and their own uh, store books and, and equipment and stuff, you'd have a single point of logistics that would deliver goods to all of the, uh, all of the schools. Um, and then, so you're uh, receiving and warehousing and then, uh, so shortages would also be reduced because there would be more in stock because it's a larger district. Maintenance, <coughs> streamlined and centralized. So you would be able to have a uh, full-time, let's say, electrician or plumber or pipe fitter or something. These smaller school districts probably can't, uh, wouldn't warrant that, but with a larger school district, you'd be able to centralize maintenance needs. Uh, more efficient use of uh, maintenance personnel, and you can specialize the tasks and make, use them more efficiently. Uh, I put this last thing on here because I, I had some room, but um, with the efficiencies, you would have uh, property taxes might be able to be reduced. Okay, what I think is also some good points here that I want to make sure I bring up. Facilities advantages. <coughs> the new board of, of the school board of this larger school district would be able to look at all the facilities. Right now, if you have a small district, if, if, uh, if enrollment is 60% of each of these schools, you can't realign them because you still have to leave them open. But if you look at all of these schools, you could probably realign some of them, close some facilities, make much more efficient use of your facilities. Um, and then if enrollment went up, You'd have facilities there that you could reopen. You wouldn't have, there would be no need for construction. You would just be able to use a facility that already existed. So that's um, benefits of, of uh, more efficient use of, of, of the um, facilities and the schools in, in a larger district would certainly bring uh, efficiency and, and reduce costs. Um, okay, now revenue. This is a very important point. This is a point that I, I think that maybe you didn't all catch this, but to me, this is an important one. A small district. Here's a two school district. District 31. There's only two schools. One elementary school, one junior high school. Has a large entity in that district, a uh, company who pays a lot of property taxes. Now that one company goes and appeals their property taxes and gets a reduction. All of a sudden this school district is in austerity. They're losing programs, they're laying off staff, they're laying off faculty, and they're cutting back on everything. Uh, for a, a large entity like that affects a small district quite a bit. Now, if this was one district and all state got a uh, relief on their property taxes, it would just be a bump in the road on revenue. It wouldn't be a, a brick wall. And, and that's kind of what this little school district ran into there. And that is a real difficult way to, to, to go is where your entire education or the quality of education for the students in that district hinges on whether there's a property tax appeal that is won or lost by some company. Uh, spreading that out over a much larger entity, I think, is much more advantage to uh, all the taxpayers um, because every time that's going to happen in a small district, the taxpayers are going to end up either paying or losing. Um, and so I think that's a point that I, uh, may have been lost is that the revenue, it reduces the concentration of revenue. Like all state was very highly concentrated in that one school district. And so no one revenue source can drastically change the base. And I think that's a very important point of having a combined district of all that. Now, talking about the students, I don't want to just talk about money. But one of the things for students is more and better programs. When you have a district like this, some examples would be music, athletics, industrial arts, drama. For example, each of these high schools probably have a single band. But um, that band has students of poor, medium, and high talent. So if you have one district, you could have a band for just lower uh, level students, and you're going to have a band for higher talented students. And when you're learning in that kind of environment, it's a much more um, uh, accommodating atmosphere for the students 
um, because the larger number of schools could accommodate different levels of music. But you know, this is just an example. Uh, another example is special needs. Now, a lot of these school districts are so small, they only have a few special needs students. If you have a full district, you could have full-time staff, you could have a facility with special needs uh, accommodations, and you could much more efficiently and effectively, I think it's more important that it's effective, um, education for, let's, for special needs students. Uh, by bringing all these schools together, you could designate one maybe for special needs, and you can have special facilities, you can have a full-time staff. That'd be a very effective way to help uh, those types of students. So those are the, um, some of the uh, advantages I wanted to point out of, um, of, of having a district that is all of these. Now, I, there was a couple of points in this thing in your report that I um, wanted to uh, mention. When you, you talked about when you're bringing these schools together, merging them all, uh, let's say bringing these two together, I like to say a kind of maybe a different point is I'd say there would be a new district. So my idea to, uh, would be you target a uh, school year, maybe 15, 16 or 16, 17, uh, and you would elect uh, within the next year a school board for that new school district. This Northbrook Elementary School District would be a new school district. The assets would come from these little school districts, but these districts would continue to operate albeit without long-term programs, uh, for the short term, and then this new district would begin their planning right away. And that would, they would be looking at these assets, and, um, and they would be governing, this is a whole new board of education that would be elected by the people for this area, and they would kind of look forward with their vision of what that district is gonna look like. Um, and then they would start that planning, looking at these assets and how are they gonna do it, they would be looking at the faculty and stuff, but I don't see a lot of change in faculty or in, um, um, that's fine, I'll, I'll wrap it up. Uh, I, in staff, there would be some reductions, but the, the point is these would then have an end date and the new district would start that next year, 15 or 16, and they would continue on. And I think that would be a very orderly way to do it. And it really wouldn't be like a merge, it would just be like, these would end and the new district would start. So um, those are the kind of the important points I wanted to uh, point out and I thank you for your time. Okay, thank you very much and, and thanks for taking the time to uh -huh. uh, think through this so well. We very much appreciate your thoughts okay. and uh, uh, I think that, that the commission has thought through many of them but mm -hmm. some of them are new ideas that we will benefit from reviewing. So thank okay. you very much, Paul. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Uh, we haven't had anyone else sign up uh, in advance to give testimony, but I would like to extend the opportunity to anyone who wishes, please. I'd like to just make a brief comment. My name is Jeff Stawick. I'm the superintendent of Community Consolidated School District 146. Uh, we serve the villages of Tinley Park, parts of Oak Forest, and parts of Orland Park. Uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, Lieutenant Governor Simon very generous uh, for her to come around and introduce herself to the members of the audience beforehand. I want to apologize for stumbling over myself when you did so. I have to admit I was a bit starstruck. Um, I would like to caution uh, the commission with regard to administrative savings in a consolidation environment. My previous job was in Steger School District 194, a school district of roughly 1,600 students uh, that was predominantly dependent on general state aid for revenue. And despite the fact that my new job in 146 uh, serves just under 2,400 students, which is still uh, modest in size compared to our neighbors in South Cook, um, and the fact that in Steger 194, I served as the superintendent and the business manager combined. In 146, we have a full-time, very talented business manager. And I have to say that just increasing the district by one school building and 800 kids has made the role of the superintendent much greater and much more challenging. So the idea that you could combine two school districts into one and save half the administrative costs from a district office perspective, uh, I think may be an overstatement. Uh, my final comment is I'm very encouraged by the findings of the commission. I wanna thank you all for your very hard work and for L Lieutenant Governor Simon's leadership and getting the focus back on quality and on students and not just simply money. I understand that the nature of things in the state of Illinois require money to be part of the, the conversation. However, 
education is, is the business of, of students and student learning. I just want to reassure the commission, and I hope that you'll convey this down in Springfield, that many of the recommendations that you've made in your report are the things that the superintendents uh, in South Cook, we do regularly. Uh, it's, almost, it's almost our entire job to find efficiencies and ways to combine efforts in order to save money, particularly in a climate where it feels like the rules are increasing and increasing and the revenue is decreasing and decreasing. So we're constantly trying to find ways to combine efforts. We're in consortiums for the purchasing of health insurance, uh, for the purchasing of uh, facility and liability insurance, for uh, purchasing of materials, office supplies, large equipment cooperatives for purchasing. We're almost all involved in some type of special ed cooperative, so we uh, share resources in that way. I'm sure that I've forgotten as many examples or more than I can remember tonight, but I just want to reassure, reassure everybody that uh, we support the recommendations in your, in your report, and those are our practices on a regular basis. Thank you. All right, thank you. I appreciate your comments very much, and I think uh, you know, it's, they're certainly consistent with what we found as a commission uh, that you can't make a blanket assumption about cost savings through consolidation. Uh, that sometimes it's going to be more expensive, uh, and that's why we chose not to have any one-size-fits-all kind of recommendation. Uh, with regard to the cooperation that you're engaged in, uh, I very much appreciate that, and I want to make sure that school districts across the state can take advantage of your leadership, your experience, uh, and, uh, and I, I thank you for your card, and I'll be following up because one of the things we'd like to do is, is start a pool of... Uh, some sample agreements that you have on working with other districts so that districts who haven't done this before uh, can take advantage of that. We are at your service, and if there's anything that you'd like from us, uh, just give me a call. Good deal. Thanks very much. Any questions? Okay. Anyone else who wishes to have something to say here today? I do have one comment. Yes, I please. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it seems weird to be up here saying. <laughs> Um, uh, one of our former state superintendents uh, on a different subject a long time ago said, um, well, we have a lot of victory gardens in the state, but what we really need is amber waves of grain. <laughs> and I think that's what we're saying. We see a patchwork of great things going on in different places, but I think what you're talking about is scaling that mm -hmm. to, to a place where everyone can take advantage of it. So thank you all for... Uh, offering to help us right. gather those ideas. Well, let me say one more time uh, that uh, this is an opportunity to have input, but not the only. Uh, our final report uh, we'll be releasing in mid-June. Uh, so if you have any great inspirations in the car on the way home, uh, please get in touch with our office, and we'll be happy to take advantage of your great inspirations. Uh, and thank you very much, everyone. We appreciate it. All right. <laughs> Round of applause for all of us. Yes. All right.